everyone, and welcome back to this series on open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part five, so let's get into it. In this session today, we're going to look at how we can create a panorama of a video to assist us in geolocating exactly where that video may have been filmed. When we say a panorama, what we actually mean is a sequence of screenshots that are linked together geographically in relation to what we see in the video when the camera pans around. So for example, in this video that we're looking at here, the person filming pans right around and we can get a full range of vision as to what features are in the background of this video, in the foreground, and the layout of this compound where these people are. The best way to find a start point is to have a look at which way the camera is turning. For example, in the majority of this film, the camera turns right to left to give us a full vision of view from the buildings and the vehicle that we can see to the right side of the field of vision, right around the property, until we can see that plume of smoke and back to the building where the people actually walked out of at the beginning. So for this panorama, I'm going to work my way from right to left. Obviously, if your video or your footage is moving from left to right, you would start your panorama in that sequence from left to right as well. We can use software to try and create panoramas and automate some of this process. However, I find it's not always accurate in stringing together that sequence and I like to be as perfect as possible with stringing this sequence together, this geographic sequence, so that it will help us more in the challenge of geolocation. Just so we don't use up too much time, I'm going to speed up some of this section and describe how I've been going through this process and exactly what I'm doing to link the sequence of screenshots together. So to start with, for my panorama, I always like to start with a black background. It's easy to make, you can do that in any Photoshop utility, or you can do it in GIMP, which is completely free. I use a Mac, so I just do a lot of this in Preview as well, which comes standard with a Mac computer. The process we'll go through throughout this video is basically screenshotting sequences that link together. So for example, a lot of these screenshots you'll see, I always make sure that there is some overlap and that the overlap is of a object in the background or the foreground, something that's obvious that I can overlay or overlap in the panorama to make sure that the sequencing is correct. So for example, you'll see that I'm using the wall a lot as a measuring tool to overlap and sometimes I will cut the scene from the face of the main person seen in this footage and work my way forwards from that to know and to have a little marker. So in the examples we can see some of the, the bins in the background or the patches on the road or the trees. All of these help us sequence our screenshots so that we can get a, a proper panorama to give us a true vision of what this actually looks like on the ground if we were standing there. So now that we have our panorama almost complete, what I usually like to do is to use the transparency tool on preview. So this just allows me to remove that black background that I was originally working with and make it into a transparent background. And that will allow me to actually cut the whole panorama and to level it out so that we can flatten the image rather than having it on this angle that we've created here. And that really helps for presentation if you're going to use this in reports or publishing it online or sending it to other people. And with that, we can now start to get into the geolocation stage of actually finding and using this panorama to identify where this video was filmed from. So first, when we geolocate this video, what we're trying to do is find uh, where this may have been filmed or any clues as to the location or the area. Uh, so I originally got this video from this account from Ivan Sidorenko. Uh, we can see here that the video says uh, it's in Syria. Um, we can also see down in the description a little bit more. So again, taking that context when we're doing the geolocation, 
down into the uh, description of the YouTube video. It says, video is during the Eastern Aleppo Offensive to recapture the thermal power plant and surrounding areas. So I'm going to take it that maybe we have a significant landmark that we could look out for, which is the thermal power plant near or in Eastern Aleppo. So what we can do is we can just go straight to Google and I've typed in this search result already. Uh, so I've typed in Aleppo thermal power plant and we can have a look and see if we can get a location for that. So here's a Wikipedia page. And if we go down Aleppo thermal power plant, we've got some coordinates here. So I'll copy those and we'll pop them into Google Maps. I'll take those coordinates now and I'll put them into Google Earth as well. And just to be a little bit more definitive about the location that we found here, um, just to sort of verify that this is indeed the thermal power plant in Eastern Aleppo. We can see in the video that we have this smoke plume coming out of the left, which could be coming from these destroyed containers or drums or whatever they are. Uh, and we can also see these these silos or these, these pylons uh, over here as well, these towers. Uh, and we can see them there too. So now we can start to get into the process of working our way backwards and identifying where that compound is where the video is actually being filmed from as well. And so now we can really go through uh, Google Earth and because we were looking at that smoke cloud over there and we could see that we had the pylons, if we go to our Google Earth, we could see and, and we already identified that this was the possible location of this because we can see it was filmed at the Aleppo thermal power plant or in the background. But just to exactly geolocate that compound, we can now use this and we can see that, okay, that's the, the smoke plume is coming from the destruction that we saw here. And we can see these smokestacks over here. And so we can start to work our way backwards from that. So if we have those positioned there, because the smoke was coming from here, the plumes or the... Uh, the sort of towers, the five things here uh, are on the right of that in this image, then we can work our way backwards uh, from that and see if we can find, okay, so we've got a an empty area. There's a lot of trees on this sort of part of it. There's a lot of trees over here. And on the right of where that where that line would be coming back to this, this uh, uh, person, where that line would be from the smoke and to this person on the right of it should be these two buildings next to each other perhaps this wall that finishes here these trees or a tree like area so we can start to work our way backwards from that and see if we can identify anything and as we've got this location here just working my way back from where that power plant is over there we're now working our way back and we found this compound here so we could start matching up some of these these buildings in the compound so we have this one which is so let's work our way from the right actually so we have this gap or this where, where a car park might be and a little driveway into the compound uh, okay so we have that so we'll orientate our map like this driveway we've got some trees in the background Yep, check, got that. Uh, we have a like a building structure over there, so that might be that. Camera pans around, and we can see in the rest of this scene, so just down from that, a uh, fair way down from the, the entrance to this compound, we have some buildings on the inside of the compound. Okay, check, we can see them there. Not too sure if we can see the, the tower or anything along here. Uh, I mean the, the flagpole or whatever it was. Uh, but if we keep moving along, we can see some sort of concrete barricade thing there. And that might have even been this. That's possibly it. And that would match up quite well because we've got a fence line. So perhaps it was being filmed from here. We have this fence line. We've got some trees over here as well. And so that's just the, the power of creating a panorama. It seems like a lot of work, but it also helps. And why this also helps is because if we're going to present this 
as a geolocation finding, we could simply take a screenshot of this compound, which I'll select here, and then we could publish a comparison between this panorama and this screenshot to say exactly why we think that this or, or why we know that this is the location and so we could even mark that up as you know the entrance to the driveway here these two buildings this possible little wall and we can really figure out almost down to the square meter or, or square five meter or square ten meters exactly where the person that was filming this was standing when that video was being filmed and that's really useful for open source investigations, open source intelligence, and just general research for anything you're looking at when you're trying to find a location.